All just eleven. We're back. We're, We're fr- back, baby. We're friggin' sick as shit. Fucking um, dope dogs, dude. What is this? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Two weeks off vacation. <laughs> we didn't go on vacation. Our brain still half melted yeah. from uh, our friend's party. Yeah. So we're not, we're, we're trying to still kind of recover from that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't realize how old you're getting until hangovers last more than a day. Yeah. Drinks, before it was drinks like, go oh, down just as easy, but the recovery. yeah, you could drink more and you don't feel drunk when you're going to bed. You're like, Oh, I feel fine. I ate like a fucking pig, whatever. We're good. Yes. And, and no, the no. reason we're scrambling about this is we just want to give you an explanation on why we haven't recorded in the last two weeks. Yeah. If you guys want to take out any anger directed towards Zaggy. Adam Zagaria because yeah, he's, he's the cause of this. Show. He's never been on our show. He's, he's scared. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a little bit. Of, he's a little bit scared. He's he's a worried Inter fan that we might call him out. Yeah, he's, so not it's, a, he's not a real. We'll have show. him on here one day, and then you guys can just tear him apart. Yeah, because yeah, he's the reason. Uh, you know, we couldn't do the show the last couple of weeks. Poor Joe had to you know recover the first couple of days. Me, it was a week after I felt it, and <laughs> and now we're here, <laughs> one week away from the Euros. What better time to come back to you guys? Yeah. But we're not going to bore you with Euro. Not talk quite. Yet. yet. Yes. That's next week because we thought about it. We could talk about the Euro, do a little preview and stuff like that. But what are we going to talk about next week? And then what are we going to talk about for the month? And we might as well, you know, give back a little bit for, you know, the two weeks that we were out and maybe have a couple little guests next week. Yeah. A little surprise guests for, for the audience. So they'll, uh, they'll, they'll see that next week. We're not going to give away any uh any hints or surprises yeah we can't because no. then it's not a surprise anymore yeah exactly yeah, no, it's no. just a you know, we're all about surprises yeah. and gift giving um but a lot of stuff has happened the season's done yeah. officially officially it's officially um, over Bayern Sorry, leverkusen hey. lost nerds we said it here <laughs> first i should wear my atlanta jersey today. we said it here first see i had a plan for last week and then we died yeah, we had the whole. We we actually conducted a parade here in in Toronto, but <laughs> nobody showed up. It was just us. I had a Gasparini flag and everything. Yeah. Add a Skamaka flag. <laughs> everyone like everyone was kind of confused about what yeah, we were doing. Like, Why are they promoting these two weird looking men? And we're like, <laughs> whatever. We're just having fun. Uh yeah. Uh, Juve made Champions League. Congrats, and we're they won back. the Coppa Italia. We're we're back, baby. Roma basically won the Scudetto because we finished above Lazio, and I don't have to stop for, watching for football. season in what three years? Yeah. That's now, you that finally, now you finally stick to your word. Now I could actually watch football again. Thank God. <laughs> Not that I ever stopped. But anyways. Uh, the principle. Madrid won Champions League, of course. You, We can Frogs. go through a whole season and not know what's happening. And at the end of it, be like, hey, Madrid won Champions League. And, and that's the most normal thing Eight ever. times out of ten, we're going to be right about yep. that. So nothing new on that side. Uh, what else? What else do we have? Um, Olympiacos won conference say, league. Conference league. Olympiacos Just that, won. like a quick summary of things. Pretty wild that yeah. they won. Kind Olymp- of sad. They, hey, the team it was lost. pretty crazy actually that they had a zero point zero zero one percent chance to win after they got in railed by Maccabi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that tournament, and then they came out and won it all. But they are yeah. one of the only names, other than like the Italian teams that are in there, that I actually know. Yeah. of the team. Well, okay, I know them now because that's kind of you've been through, you've been through it. Yeah, it First team to win it. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. no, no, who else can say that? Who's keeping track? Not me. Who else can say not that? Not me. Yeah, exactly. Not West Ham. Not Olympiacos. No, we won no it one. first. No one. That belongs to us. Yeah. Um, we're probably say. missing something, but it's okay. Not we're going to really, jump into much, today's man. episode. Uh, we're going to talk about, we mentioned a couple weeks back, like the whole transfer merry-go-round of coaches and stuff like that. So, we're going to touch upon what we already know, like what the heck is even happening in <laughs> Bayern's world and Barcelona and so on and so forth. Uh, we're going to talk about Arsenal. And we're going to ask and try to figure out what's up with Arsenal. The bold it. Like, uh, what's up there? Uh, and then ended off with a cute little team that we will talk about a little bit later on. We're going to build a team like we, we do. Like we know? usually do. Yeah. You know, we're, the one thing we're good at is building teams, and uh, that's what we're here to give you. Yeah. So starting things off, let's talk about um, the coaching, the coaching merry-go-round. merry-go-round that, yeah, which, thank you, Al. Which I honestly thought was going to go a lot longer and into the summer. And my God, I think before the Euro start, we're pretty much going to know who all the new coaches yeah, for these teams yeah. are going to be. Maybe like, give or take like one or two uh, coaches. Yeah, okay, but, like dude, They're still in the advanced negotiation remember, process. Remember but, a couple episodes back, we were talking about this whole merry-go-round that's going to happen this summer. And, you know, we've seen it. It was like two or three summers ago when there was like five new coaches in Serie A. Mm. And, you know, we thought it was going to kind of drag on considering how that one went. Like, you know, with negotiations and everything. But like 
dude, majority of these like coaches already, yeah, already with their team signed sealed. the contract and like it's going quick. <laughs> yeah. Thank thankfully. Uh, I I told Al earlier I don't want any business conducted during the year. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I don't want Roma to be linked with any Italian player for the okay. duration of the Euro. Did also he got his contract resigning? That That's happened all that before matters. the Euro. That's yeah. all that matters. That's all that matters. All that matters. Any business is done before and after. As in Moon, my world, as Moon, you can figure out after. No, as Moon's going leaving, we already oh, figured see. it out. Yeah, Unless okay. we could get a discount, but Bayern Leverkusen hates us. Now you swap him we... him for Chiesa. <laughs> Sounds good to me. But after the Euro, we'll talk about that. Not right now. Not right now. We gotta wait. Uh, but yeah, okay. Let's talk about this merry-go-round of coaches. Uh, Where are we starting off, Joe? Let's start off with Bayern Munich because I Ooh, think that is probably Germany. the biggest crackpot thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> you get relegated in your league and you become the coach of <laughs> one of the best teams in the world. But they, not like it, it. Bayern hurts my head. I think that's what it is. They had. Before before Tuchel, they had was it was it uh, Hansi Flick? No, Nagelsmann. 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 You had Nagelsmann before him was Flick. Yeah, so you had Flick, Nagelsmann, Tuchel, and then now you bring in company. <laughs> so three good coaches that you just you're like yeah nah we don't we we we're, we're not getting what we want even though we're winning let's sack them and bring in somebody new mm. mess that all up and now you're gonna go with a non German manager which. I know, I know it's 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 not that crazy because everybody's every you look at, it, at teams all around the world, no one really goes by like you know, Italian team sticking with Italian coach, yeah, no yeah. one does anymore. But for Bayern, I feel like that's what was like their identity was, yeah, for like there, a long yeah, time. Like, was. yeah, you had your peps and your Angelotti's come in, but like every time you looked at Bayern, it was always a German coach. Like mm-hmm. that was like a, I feel like it was just a, a part of the culture there. Yeah. And like now, like okay, yeah, you're bringing in okay, somebody else that's not German, but Vincent Company. Yeah, see, I, I, I was going to ask they you. Must have, they maybe... must have seen that. You said that TikTok. Well, I see, I see it on TikTok. The video of him in the dressing room. No. He's like, boys, you haven't seen a fucking side of me yet. <laughs> and he's like snapping, dude. Like giving them like a, a maybe they want before that, the game. Maybe they want like, a random. I don't know if they saw that and they were like, yo, this is the guy we need. <laughs> this guy's going to lead us to the promised land. Vincent Company. I mean, Vincent Company. Harry Kane used to burn company. But hey, now he's coaching now he's him. Coaching. <laughs> Harry Kane also, random stat, I will say. Harry Kane finally did actually accomplish something technically. Yeah. He broke Kingsley Coleman's record of mm-hmm. always winning a trophy. Yeah. Cheers, Goddamn. Harry See, Kane. You say Harry Kane can't do nothing? Maybe you're just cursed, man. He can't do something. It sucks. Can, I'm sorry. He can break other people's but, legacies. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Let's talk about this back, company. Back thing. to the coaches, the company. Dude, <laughs> I don't know if it, that was just me. Completely sideswiped by that one. Yeah. Did not I, see that coming. See, I, I saw the rumor and I thought... <laughs> Maybe, it, you know, it, like they're just it, linked with a bunch of people. It like heated, most up, teams it are. heated up pretty quick. Yeah. Like that room. Yeah. Like when I first saw that, I was like, okay, he's probably, his name's probably just kind of in the mix. Everyone's trying to go for this, you know, young, new coach. Okay. I get it. But then when I saw like, oh, he's taking a plane there. Oh, he's there. He signed the contract. I was like, oh, this is actually like legitimately yeah, happening. Yeah. Like if, if it was like, you know, like a mid, like a Warder Bremen or like a Schalk or so one of those kind of teams. Schalk's not even in the first division anymore. No, I was just saying, uh, but one of those like no, you know, I, yeah. mid to high table teams. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see it for him. You know, it's a, it's good experience. But Bayern Munich, man, he literally <laughs> skipped everything. I don't know, man. I know coaches sometimes they do that, you know. But I don't know if he, first of all, if he's the right guy, considering he just got relegated with his last team, or you know, just doesn't have the experience, doesn't check off any of the boxes that Byron looks at for most of their coaches. So like for that, like it's, it's a very interesting move. Like I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around See, that whole thing. I, I don't know if maybe we're looking at it too black and white. So I've been trying to like, I was like everything black and white. I get it. You a fan. <laughs> I've been trying to like mull over this and look at it and think like, okay, maybe we're just looking at it like this, but it's also like, you know, company maybe actually is a great tactician and we just don't know it because he was coaching one of the worst sides in, England, Mm -hmm. you know, and maybe there is something behind it. But then you look, it's like, even when he got promoted, it's not like they're playing champagne football or anything fancy. So like in second division, he wasn't even the best team there, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, there's a lot of things I'm just playing in my head and maybe they're thinking they're going with that route of like the Shabby Alonso X player. Uh, Let's see if maybe he could be a good coach and player at the same, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't even know. But then I'm also thinking, Maybe they want to start a brand new dynasty. I you think know, that's like, like, and they're okay with potentially not winning the league. Mm-hmm. What if they also think, oh yeah, Leverkusen, this was a one-off what they just did. 
nobody's even close to us because we already know like Dortmund's going to sell key guys. Leverkusen's going to sell key guys. We have the financial power to maintain key guys mm. and maybe buy our biggest rivals fucking <laughs> key guy, you know? So maybe that's what they're thinking in their head and they could build slowly with company. But, but then Bayern, again, like, but, what's but, the expectation? So when has Bayern right? ever been that team to build something slow? Like, no, I know. All, like, they always, you know, want to be that top team. They want to be competitive. So, like, that, that's just, it's, it, the move doesn't make sense. Like, I, the only way I can see it is, like you said, them, you know, kind of accepting it quick and not letting it drag on and trying to revive something and just saying, okay, you know what? That was a good dynasty. You know, we, we had fun in our 11 years. Now let's start something new. Mm-hmm. It ended. Let's start fresh now. Yeah. We don't have that pressure, like, you know, to keep, you know, kind of keep that going for, you know, a 12 year, 13. We don't have that anymore. Let's start fresh and and, yeah. and try to build something with this. Hey, we can, you know, both come back ne- at the end of the next season. And, you know, he just revolution revolutionizes that team. Yeah. But he's going to, he's going to have to do a lot to, I think to, to get a lot of people on board and just prove himself that he could be a top manager one day. Well, what do you think the expectation is for a company and Bayern Munich? So with, again, with a top team like Bayern, nothing short than first place and and trying to go as far in any competition that they're in, and to try to bring as many trophies as they can home. Like that's 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 the the joke. Like crazy. I'm just saying that because I I understand that I've been going through that the last what fucking four years now. Finally, we won't be like we won a trophy this year, so we were able to. Okay, you know what? We know what it feels like to win again, especially with a lot of these young guys. Now let's keep this going. A team like Juve, a team like uh, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, mm-hmm. they lose one or two, three years. Like they're like, hey, hey we something needs to change because yeah. we're not that team. We're not a team that hey, let's build something slow and then you know to get to that top and win the one Scudetto or one Champions League or one whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You want to build something and consecutively win because it, like like Del Piero said in an interview last week, like when they would tie, they would still be, they would still be pissed off when they would lose. Yeah. They'd be even more pissed off because anything other than a, a win was bad. Yeah. And that yeah. that's the mentality that these top teams have. So with company, like, you know, being a player and, you know, a captain, he, he understands pressure. He, you know, knows how to take it, knows how to deal with it, knows how to go through it. Now as a coach, you know, being able to, you know, when the team doesn't play good, deflect, for the teammates so, so like all the pressure is not on them and kind of take more of that pressure from them he might be good at but i just i don't know with you know with with having him leading the line and in, in building this new byron dynasty like yeah. i don't know i don't know man i'm 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 so 50 50 about him like I, I could see it happen but i just i i just smell just you know byron kind of not going into a banter era but these next like two three years they're going to be struggling yeah. and you're going to see like you might see another. We might we, we might be talking in January, and Byron has a new coach. Yeah, like, see, it might my, be that. My thing, is, my thing is that I'm thinking right now is it's almost like they're kind of they're doing this to maybe showcase something. You know what I mean? Like like almost like company will be used as a scapegoat. It's like I, I think about like with Roma and Fonseca. You mm-hmm. know, they used Fonseca as a scapegoat for their failures. It's like oh yeah, but hey, we did some stuff, and he just couldn't do it. Like mm-hmm. whatever. He's a young coach. What do you expect? He's still learning and figuring himself out. Mm-hmm. So a part of me is thinking maybe Byron's going in that kind of route where it's like, okay, we have Vincent company. He has fresh ideas. It could work out and we look like fucking geniuses yeah. or it doesn't work out. And then we just turn around and be like, Hey, he's a young coach. He's naive. He doesn't know. Yeah, I don't think he doesn't know. How to, like, not that team, I know. Like, I'm just, I'm just trying to think about the logic <laughs> behind it. And no usually, logic. <laughs> I, like usually I always see it and not, I don't see it, but you know what I mean? Like I always kind of back stuff like this. Like, Oh, mm-hmm. a young coach, you're taking a chance. Yeah. You want to build a dynasty. I fucking love that. No, this is the one time I could look at you and say, I genuinely can't see why they got Vincent company. Mm-hmm. Like there are so many other people they could have gotten or even, tried to lure away or anything like that and they just opted for vincent company yeah. it's not like they i didn't even see them linked with other people no it was literally just i literally just, just saw all of a sudden vincent, vincent company, company. Like, i saw vincent company they tried to get nagelsman back and that was it mm-hmm. those are the only two names i saw and now i'm just here like cheers <laughs> i guess um yeah, but i feel like they, they like once they once like jabby was like yeah i'm staying here one more year 
I feel like they were oh, just that's like another guy. Yes, forgot that they were linked with him. Yeah, they, they, they were, were trying to lure him. They, over they were trying to get him over there because you know he he's played there. He's already in Germany to kind of make that transition, stay in the league. It makes sense. That could also be another thing. They can also be getting company as like a stopgap. Yes, like, yeah. hey, have him come in a year. If he does good, hey, we look we look amazing. If he does bad, we get rid of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But see, that, that's like, that, like what they did with Fonseca with Roma. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a stopgap type yeah. of thing. You're being, getting paid the bare minimum, whatever. You know, like that. It, that's it what could I'm be, thinking. It could, it could be. be like that. Would make sense if I see that. Okay, I understand. But other than that, this move to me was just the most random thing. Yeah, ever. it's I I personally don't understand it. Um, but. It's it's also it's almost like the whole Xavi with Barcelona thing, mm-hmm. okay? Where it's like you saw him come there, you saw what he did, you saw what he did for the club. You saw him say he's gonna leave, then turn around and say he's gonna stay, and now he left, mm-hmm. and now they replaced him. You, you already think about what Xavi did. Technically, he brought in a lot of youngsters. He kind of developed like some. He kind of brought back the Barcelona tradition. Yeah, and now they go with a guy like Flick. Which is completely opposite of what the <laughs> fundamentals of Barcelona is. I'm not saying Flick's a bad coach. I think that's a great fucking coach, yeah. and I think he'll be the guy to kind of light a fire under their ass and give the Spanish a German lesson. You know, mm-hmm. and I don't mean it in a political stance in any way, guys. Not at all, but like, I'm saying like that more tough as nails, to it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know. So I think it's something like that in a sense. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think? They, do you think that they, they just brought him in because they're like, mm, this guy beat us eight one. Let's uh. Well, that's <laughs> hopefully yeah. he can do the same to tell to other teams. I think they <laughs> think he's gonna be like the saving grace, and I honestly feel like Hansi Flick is gonna have a very tough time at Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think like there's okay, a, there's a lot of problems at Barcelona yeah. that no, we well, don't see. <laughs> when Xavi left, he even came over and said, "Whoever coaches Barcelona next will a see the work I've done and see how it benefited Barcelona, and b have a very tough time getting them to the top." Mm-hmm. So that means that there could even be an internal problem with Laporte. Yeah. You know, like they're like, and again, Hansi Flick is now there. Good coach. He's gonna. He has Lewandowski back. Where he got the fucking what? what how many goals did he get that year? Forty something. Forty something. Whatever. Goals, goals he has Lewandowski back. A couple years past, obviously, so he's a little bit older. But he has a good group to start off with. Mm-hmm. So it's like, will he be able to get automatic success? I doubt it. Yeah, but maybe yeah. again, like, on, like that, that that whole move, that whole situation thing, kind of lost. A little bit of respect for Barca in the sense where, like, you know, you had Javi, Javi, not Javi, Javi, who said that, okay, he was going to leave. Then he says he's going to stay. You know, he wants to stay with his team, build his team and and keep going. And then at the end of it, you end up sacking him Mm -hmm. like uh, he's a club legend. He did for for what the team was. And like you said, he brought up a lot of youth, introduced a lot of youth that having didn't get a, 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 a single minute with the senior team, and now they're introducing them, playing these new guys, and they're doing well. He's bringing them in at a slow pace where, you know, they're not having all this pressure on them that they're actually able to thrive. Mm -hmm. And then in the end of it, you end up just sacking him like he's nothing. Yeah. Like, that that's the part that pissed me off. But just because, oh, well, this guy that came available that that he said he was actually down to come because he beat you guys one time and embarrassed you guys in Champions League, that's why you want to bring him in. Like Put aside even, like, the the club legend aspect for this. Like, it's a look at Xavi and say you had a failure of a season is absolutely absurd. Yeah, no, Re, the Real Madrid team, the team that won everything, yeah, like dude, they, they were built to win fucked. now. But they're, you know the thing, I mean? they're like, fucked. Yeah, but that's what I mean. They're <laughs> built to win now. Yeah, you can't. They compare. kind of went through their whole. Let's integrate our youngsters in Vinny, Rodrigo, this guy, this guy, mm-hmm. like whatever. They went through that and did what they had to do. Yeah. Barcelona is now at that phase. So for what Xavi had and what he did. Mm really doesn't get enough credit and the fact no, that they man. just kind of disrespect him and say later. yeah later and like, like man he was he was trying to build something and do something man you look back at barcelona with you know messi coming up in the ranks and he's just kind of getting that starting to get that playing time people are starting to see who, who Lionel messi is at that time where you know um ronaldo's he's getting hot at united about to make a move to to madrid mm-hmm. that whole rivalry starting Madrid just keeps spending buying Modric, Bale, Benzema, Cruz, all these guys, super, super team. And they could not dominate for consecutive years because of that Barcelona team yeah. who I think in the, in, you look at before like the Neymar years at their core, who was giving Real Madrid a very, very hard time. The only guy that they really spent money on was David Villa and Henri. 
Danny Alves, which was Danny think, Alves, what, like ten mil from Sevilla. Not much. That's what I mean. They didn't. They were. It was all within, or was, they got them when they were kids. They, exactly. Oh, sorry, they, when that, they were very young. And that's how Barca was. Mm-hmm. They, that, that's what they were known as. That's what they, they they were just known as building and just fighting against you know this guy that this team that has all this money and all this power and dethrone them and say, hey, <laughs> guess you can't buy that. You can't buy these uh, these all these these yeah, Champions yeah. Leagues. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, now it's just. He was doing that again, and he was, you know, yeah, okay, these guys, you're not going to have another Messi for a long time yeah. if we even ever see one again. Yeah. But you see these guys that actually have promised. They're actually good young players that could be something, and Javi was doing very well with them. And then to get rid of him, to bring this guy here, which, you know, like you said, he doesn't have – he's not – He's never played there. He doesn't know, you know, the culture of Barca and, you know, what, what they what they stand by and, you know, how they work. So, you know, he might want different things and, you know, not look as much into the youth and start trying to, you know, I want this guy because, you know, I need him and I want this guy because I need him for my midfield. I need this guy for my defense and start buying all these guys. That's that's ne- never was what Barcelona is. Yeah. So, like, that's like kind of where I see, like, you know, the bigger problem in this whole thing rather than, you know, them just sacking Javi and bringing this guy is a scumbag move, but... In the big picture, it, it's not Bar- like Barca is trying to change, you know, their culture and what they've, how they've built this name that they have right now, because of their how they, what they were able to do with these kids and just produce all these young kids mm-hmm. and make them into these superstars. And I, I feel like now they're kind of going to go away from that again. With they actually may, we're making progress on it, and they're yeah. just going to kind of push that aside. Like obviously, we don't know. Like it, it could change. He could be, you know continue to start using the continue to, to use the youth there. But I don't know. I feel like just having, you know, a different kind of guy come in that doesn't really know the culture. I, I think it's going to make Barcelona worse. Do you think Hansi Flick could have, could, do you think he is able to kind of integrate himself into that whole Catalonian way of football? Or do you think he's going to come there and impose his, I think, like I think, like, I think, I think he's going to try to imp, like impose his own, kind of rules and laws and the way he plays and the way he thinks to this team. And I feel like that's going to cause problems. Do you think he stays for his whole contract? Um, how long, how long did he like sign? I think it was two year. No, I think it was longer. Long term. I think it was three, yeah, see, three yeah. or something like that. Barch is going to throw the little, little, little uh, bite themselves in the ass about that yeah. one. But I think, uh, no, I don't think he lost the whole thing. I think they're gonna be paying some severance after yeah. after a year, I, I say, year and a half. I, I was gonna say, I think after this year, a Barcelona won't be patient because <clears throat> they'll see Real Madrid do well again, yeah. and they're gonna say oh, they're gonna want to be success. right there. Yeah. Um. So that's where I see then them kind of getting irritated with Hansi Flick and mm-hmm. kind of try to part ways, which I'm never a fan of. I'm never a fan of a coach leaving after a year. I think that is the biggest mistake anyone can make. Oh yeah. You know, like even. Go look at Chelsea now. Oh. You know, I, I'm not saying Port should have been sacked, shouldn't have been sacked, or anything like that. I won't provide an opinion on that just yet. Poach. But <laughs> you got him, and you only have him there for a year. Yeah, I get. Oh, he had a preseason with this. He had whatever. But is it really enough time to impose your whole tactic? Like, That's did you true. really give him every single player he needed for his system, A and B? And especially when like, he ended at the end of the season, ended up saving their season and getting them into to Europe again. You so, know what I mean? Like, is is it such a bad Chelsea? In my opinion, he really did salvage a season. So for oh, yeah. that, I think he at least earned another half a season. Yeah, yeah. I would give him at least another. Half I season. think, and I, and I don't like the guy. Yeah, <laughs> I think they really kind of fucked the dog on that one, for yeah. lack of a better term, and. I don't think Enzo Maresca is going to be a bad coach, but it's also a even bigger gamble than having Poch there. Yeah. You know, like you had him, you saw what he was able to do. You saw he was able to salvage the season for you. Okay, let's build off that. You bought a brand new team for him mm-hmm. or whatever it is, all under the ages of 23, apparently. They're going to need time to settle, A, because they're all youngsters. So they need to acclimatize to living the life of mm-hmm. these bigger guys already. B, he has to settle in and then C, you like... His system, you still didn't fully see it. Do you think he, like, he, everyone was injured 90% of the time. So how the hell was he ever like able to impose <laughs> his tactics on it? You know, so that's why Poch, I think, deserved that second year. Yeah. You know? Whereas Maresca now comes in. I get it. He's under the whole fucking Guardiola bracket. Mm-hmm. He, he was his assistant coach. He did this. He did that. He got automatic pro- a promotion with uh, fucking Lester over there. That's the championship. Yeah. 
This is the Premier League. This is the league. biggest a whole league different in the league, world. man. It's a big, it's a, it's a big step up. People don't realize that. Do you think? Do you things. think Manesca is going to do well? Do you think he will continue where Poch left off, like that hot streak, and actually maintain Chelsea and get them back into Champions League where they belong, or do you think Manesca is literally probably going to finish mid table like they've been doing? Not just because he's he's a Juve legend oh, yeah. and did the famous bull celebration against Torino when they when he scored in the yeah. last minute. I just, I genuinely believe, and I know I keep seeing memes about it this week, but I genuinely believe Chelsea and Italians can shake hands. They do very well together. Oh, yeah. I think you look at Chelsea when they had their biggest results and when they've won trophies, majority of the time, it was when they had an Italian on the bench. Mm. Something, it means something. And, and I feel like, dude, I, you know, I, I made it very vocal and I said it from last year when we had Rosati on the episode when Poach got signed and I was talking shit about him until throughout the season where I still talk shit about him because of how bad they were and how bad he is. And he's not a good coach. I've said that. I do agree with I don't like the one year thing. If you're going to have him there, at least have him, you know, stay another season and, and kind of see or at least halfway through the season and see But whatever it happened. Now he came in. I genuinely think I can see him pulling, you know, a top five finish with Chelsea and making a a a, a good cup run. And are they, are You're they, talking about Madeska. Madeska, right? yeah, okay, yeah okay. with Chelsea. Are they? Are they? You know, are they in Conference League or Europa League? I think it. I think. And they they went to, into Conference like League, right? Because I think, cause, yeah, yeah, because it was it, it was all based on the United uh, City game. Yes. If City say, won, yeah. they went to Europa League. Yeah. But because United won, they're in Conference League. Which okay, fine even easier for them for a team like them with what they have they should be winning that mm-hmm. and i and i and i genuinely think they're going to make a good run in that yeah but that's and they're the gonna, thing. They're, you're going to see a whole different side of do Chelsea. you even make that push like 100%. given this is this is my thing okay i agree cuz it's no matter what it's tr- it's a trophy it's exposure it's a financial bump like you know because you're winning a competition mm-hmm. going far in europe but it's also like you run the risk of fatigue Match fitness yeah, and yeah. shit like that. And you know what Go. I mean? Like, is Chelsea, do they have the depth enough to battle? And England has, for some reason, like seven league cups. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a matter of like, like they, they literally have a domestic the only The only reason I would say I would, I would make a push for that and go for that, first of all, because every team likes it, they can be the first European team to win all three trophies. Touche. Yes. Could be the first team to do that. Second, we all we, we we all know this. The competition is a lot easier than Europa League and Champions League. So realistically, they don't really probably got to put on their starters or start yeah, using those yeah. those key guys until the later end. Which I'm I'm talking like maybe even after the quarterfinals, like semis and finals, they would they can start kind of putting in like you know their bigger name guys. So I don't think they're going to be using like fatigue too much from that tournament. Plus, at the end of the day, you win that. Let's say you know the league's not going well and. Because England only has four spots, they're not like Italy, the best league in the world that has five. They only have four. I mean, that's so, all fucked everybody up. Yeah, we, we could have had like nine could, yeah, <laughs> in total, all European Atalanta competitions. And, and Fiorentina are my most hated teams besides Lazio right now. But anyways. That's okay. Roma and Juve at the top always. Sample. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that right now. But yeah. let's just say, you know, they slip down and they end up finishing again, you know, in in, in sixth or seventh place. End up going in a, in a conference league spot, at least if they win conference league. That gets them the entry to the Europa League. So at least, you know, they're 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 guaranteed they're gonna be in Europa League and they don't have to worry about the league. And they can go and you know, yeah, they might have not finished in the league where they wanted, but they can get a trophy out of it. And they've been to what the last two finals for uh was it the, the cutabout cup or the FA Cup? What was the one that just happened, the FA Cup. Yeah, FA Cup. Yeah, so the cutabout cup, they went to the final against Arsenal the last like two years. They could have easily won. They didn't. Now they can also win that too. So yeah. I, I I I could see trophy wise a successful season with Maresca. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing, and I don't know, call it me being like a, a trophyless club, the team I support. Like I this is my mentality. I think the biggest thing for Maresca would be securing a top four spot to get them back into Champions League. Mm-hmm. That's goal number one. Goal number two is getting the best out of key players like a guy like Enzo Fernandez. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, everybody loves the story of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Gallagher, a boyhood player. He's doing he well, stuff and, like that. Yeah. Or this guy doing well, this guy doing well. But 
My thing is you dropped a hundred and whatever mil on Enzo Fernandez. Yeah. That's your key guy. That's your key. You know, guy. him and Caicedo are your key guys. Mm-hmm. You saw Caicedo start to find his own. So maybe like getting even more out of him, that's one of your, your goals as well. Mm-hmm. Enzo Fernandez getting the best out of him, that's a goal. Nico Jackson, that's your number nine. Unless obviously they buy a number nine, but I haven't seen them linked with anybody. So I don't know if that's really what they're going to be pursuing. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting the best out of him. That's going to be Maresca's biggest test. Yeah. Obviously, the trophies are a big thing and everybody wants immediate success like that. But for me, I wouldn't even think about the trophies. I'd be thinking about everything outside of that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like first year, you got back in the top four. You got the best out of your players. All right, next year, now let's get other positions that we need. We mm-hmm. fill out. Let's actually finally replace Cucarella on left back, <laughs> you know? Let's pr- get a proper goalie because I'm sorry, Sanchez fucking sucks. Yeah. And I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Oh, you can play the ball with his feet. I don't care. Yeah, so can Onana. And like, I want my goalie, goalie to Onana save is. a ball. <laughs> I don't want my goalie to fucking ping a 40 yard pass and put it into the space. No, I don't care. Hoof the ball up. You know, that's all that matters to me. Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. No, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in the same. Some of the best you, goalies right? in the world were they good with their feet? No. Was no. Buffon good with his feet? No. Casillas? No. They no. knew how to save the ball, though. Mm-hmm. They were a shot stopper. You know, that's, that's all <laughs> that really matters in my world. But did not yeah. let the ball go in the net. Yeah, and I, I yeah, but that, that's what I think the biggest thing is from Manesca. I, I could mm-hmm. see him do. It's like you said though, too. It might be like even me putting on the Italian bias here, but Italians and Chelsea could shake hands. Yeah, that's made. the best way to put it because well, there's man. always success. Di Matteo, Conti. Zola, like, look at the list goes on. You know, it's 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 absurd. It's crazy. Di Matteo. I said Di Matteo. Oh, you said Di Matteo. Yeah. And he was an interim coach. Yeah. He <laughs> came in and said, "Hold my dick. I'm just gonna win Champions League for you. No problem." <laughs> Didn't even have experience. I don't think at that point. Like, he was just the vibe. He just smiled <laughs> with his almost like fucking weird eyes and everything. That was, but, that was like, crazy. That was a pretty crazy run. But um, mind. yeah. And speaking of crazy runs. Let's talk about Arsenal briefly because we kind of overextended <laughs> that conversation about coaches. <laughs> Joe, when, when you, like uh, we said, when you have a merry-go-round like that, you're bound to have a, yeah, a full-on half-an-hour conversation about, about, about the coaches. Man. We could honestly, the worst part is like there's probably a lot more we could do. We, we could dedicate one we episode. Could, we could have done coaches. this whole episode yeah. just on coaches. We could have literally, like, we still didn't even touch upon Thiago Mota to Juve, yeah. which is almost confirmed done no, deal. No big deal. Conte oh. to Napoli. It's another you know, one. It's another one. My boy. His, where's, his they want all my boys. Then there's also Deservey. Where the fuck is he going? Fun he's sexy like, coming back to Serie A. Fun sexy coming back to Serie A to Milan. Like, there's there's a lot, there's a lot we could going be touching on. upon. But maybe in three weeks we'll yeah, have after, that after, after the Euro Cup's done. Because after I this. Say, I have to say, that's not three weeks. It's another one. Whatever. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so Arsenal. Season just ended. Uh, they're always just there. But apparently they can't get it. Suck. I know there's a narrative that they're a bottle drop. And and I get it. It is oh, yeah. kind and of funny, like because they they are proving it. They are proving it. So I just I think it's like England. Okay, I always look at England and the national team, and I'm not putting them down, but I am going to be putting them down. So take it how you will, whatever. I always say eventually they have to get it right. You know what I mean? Like it's mm. the team is there, the talent is there, but uh, clearly there's something missing. And what is that? You know, with England right now, I would say the issue is Gareth Southgate. You get rid of him, you actually have a proper coach. Mm-hmm. I think that England team is like, this is their golden generation, their real one. And I think they could actually maybe accomplish something with well, a proper happened coach. with their golden generation when we were growing up, Joe? And they were just missing a piece. And then the next tournament, they'd bring somebody else up, some young stud. No, and I know. Then I know. I know. Still couldn't I agree. Up. But I always, just, I always just think to my head, like, eventually you have to break history, right? Like, you have to, like, like Italy never beating Croatia. Uh, Joel, you I'll like say him. this now. The, t- the next team, I'm not saying it's next year, but the next team, whenever it happens, that's going to be dethroning Man City from the Prem title will not be Arsenal. I will tell you that. Why? It, 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 it's, it's just not in their DNA. They had one very lucky season, and they're still riding that high from <laughs> 20 years ago. They are. <laughs> and what have they done since a couple a, a couple FA cups they try to be a top you know in the conversation of a top club in England mm. they're not even a top 4 club in England mm. yeah but they're this not. is the thing now now what they, would you they, say is the problem do you think there is like there's a a key missing piece like maybe a proper nine a proper this Joel, the coaching inter- in internal problems or is it like a mental thing where it's like i think it's almost like a harry kane concept where it's like 
you're just destined to fail. So why even fucking go for it all? You know, like it's it's not even that. Like, like last what season, is it? last season, I feel like they like you know they got too cocky. At, you know, midway through they were what twelve points up. And like they were talking and, and acting on the field like they were big shit. Like they already won the league, and they're like, "Yo, you gotta fucking." Well, I'm yo, pretty sure at that point, nice too, up, yo. You gotta listen to me. I now. think we like, actually said at that point too, like on the podcast, or I said it at least. Yeah, yeah no, like, no, Arsenal's gonna win it. Yeah, no, we were, we were saying, how do you, we saying, how do you bottle, how do you bottle that? Points. And then look what they did, man. They were like, "Oh, for my next magic trick, <laughs> we're gonna show you how to bottle twelve points <laughs> in what the last ten games." Yeah, it, it was a joke, but that's. It's it's you know not like Tottenham. It's just it's the history of the Tottenham, but it, I feel like it's just it's just Arsenal. Arsenal they're very good at coming in second. They're not. They're, they're very good they're, at almost getting. Yeah, it. like they're not a team to to finish the job. Like I, I growing up, Joe, I, I that's what I always remember them as. Like I, I remember I you know obviously I started watching the Prem and getting more involved in the Prem later, like in my later years. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but when I was younger, I still, you know, somewhat kind of followed it, knew what was happening, you know, knew who was winning, knew who was like the top of the like top three in the league. And like I just always remember just, you know, from Arsenal, the only I would like growing up that I loved, and the only reason I would actually ever watch the game was Henri. Loved Henri. Always a pleasure to watch, especially when he was there. He was fucking phenomenal. I, I, I will say I really did enjoy it when but I was younger, that, like Arsenal style. But even with that, they couldn't win. No, they won the, the Invincibles. Yeah. And then after that, that's it. They won Pipa. No, did they? Yeah, Joe. Oh, Roma won more in, in the last 10 years than they, they've done in the last 20. Yeah. No. No. Probably. Yeah, probably not. Probably. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fact check it after. Yeah, hey, Jamie, that's... pull this shit up. I wish we had a Jamie. We don't have Jamie so here sick. today, but he's pulling it up, and I know I'm right yeah. about that. No. Arsenal, to me, Joe, it's just... Like if I when you when I look at the prem and I'm like, hey, who are the two biggest imposters? Tottenham and Arsenal. Literally, the it's two crazy biggest. Crazy that imposters. those are the biggest rival. Like one, well, one of the biggest yeah, rivals. Of being of being the shittiest team. Like that's what they're literally they're literally rivaling. Okay, hey, who's worse? Let's see. And they're both shit. They end up tying. Yeah. Like they're they're. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just something about like Arsenal. Like you know, Arteta. You know, I like him. I do think he could be a good coach. I think he has to leave that team. Like. He he should have been the guy to go to Barcelona if anyone's going to replace Xavi. Not a bad bring show. Bring him in actually. there. Even really? even I could wow. see him even going to PSG once uh, Luis Enrique leaves. He's my favorite coach. I could see him going over there and and doing well. I just with Arsenal, I just think that it's it's a mentality thing, and they're just like like I dude, put put Chelsea with a half decent coach, and Chelsea could be like could be above Arsenal and and having a better fight with yeah. City for the yeah. title. Yeah. It, 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 it just something about Arsenal, man. I just I can't. I, I don't see them winning for a long time. And see, and and that's why I asked like about if you think it's like something's missing or whatever. So like ultimately, it's like a mentality thing. Yeah, I just you know, it's, like it's, it's like the it's real like history, man. You know, even to, like when we talk about mentality, like Champions League, right? Mm-hmm. Real Madrid, they're deemed the kings of Champions. Yeah. Even when they're down, somehow you don't doubt them. You know, Chelsea has that winning mentality. That mm-hmm. when they are at the top. You're not gonna knock no, them down because you know they're like they're very like, tough to you know, fucking it's, play and to bring down. It's the same thing I'd say with like a team like United. Yeah, you know, like United. Yes, is in a banter. Say what you want, guys want to say, but United has a winning mentality to that. Mm-hmm. If they are in that position and everything is going correctly, or not everything's going correctly, but stuff is going right with the proper system in place and this and that, mm-hmm. you see United could be that team too that yeah. could win. And they're and they're as, Arsenal again, is just a tough team to be when they're when yeah. they're, when they're at that at that level, but. Obviously, they're still growing. They still got to get there and sell fucking Anthony, the guy that just he has more just fucking looks than actual goals this he season. Fucking kills has, me, man. He makes me die of laughter. That guy's a fucking staring that at guy's the camera, a walking dude. meme. Literally, he honestly fits perfectly at at uh, Arsenal, perfectly on that team, dude. Like you know what's crazy though? This is no, like, but like he'd have one good game with Arsenal, oh, and, and then they, he'd blow up to be the next oh, yeah. fucking Thierry. Hundred percent. Whereas at United, like see, the mentality percent. shift is different. He has a couple bad games. Or a bat, one bad game at United, they're at his throat. Fuck this guy. The the woman abusing thing that they yeah. start going at him for, like whatever, <laughs> you know, like everything. At Arsenal, though, he has a couple bad games. No, that's our captain. No, that's no, our number that, 10. You that's our, that's our king. That's our number 10. What are you talking about? You guys like, don't they, know nothing. They, they praise Martinelli. They, that's like, like, that's, okay, that's what the, my, my next point that was, I was just getting to. You look at Arsenal again now, okay? Martinelli. Overrated. overrated. Saka. Overrated. overrated. Uh... Kai Havertz, we knew he was shit with Chelsea. 
they overpaid for him 75 fucking mil and play him as a striker when the guy is not a fucking striker and he's absolutely he's playing out of position 100 percent. okay he's yes. a guy like 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 remember hakan when milan first signed him they were playing him left wing yeah, right yeah, wing yeah, and he was yeah, horrible yeah. yeah and now you see playing as a as a okay this is a new position for him but like as a deep line playmaker you're seeing the best hakan that we've ever seen yeah and i just feel like it's the same thing with kai and they're putting him in this in the position to fail and he's constantly failing so He's shit for me, mm-hmm. overrated, because he had the, at the beginning, I think he scored a goal, and everyone's like, see, dude, Chelsea's stupid, those 75 mil, we got to steal. And he's been shit ever since. Saka's overrated, Martinelli's overrated. Saliba, he is, he's a good center back, but the way that they rate that guy makes me fucking sick to my stomach, saying that he's the best center back in the world right now in the moment. Who did you say? Saliba. I thought I just heard you say <laughs> Saka and then center back. I'm like, no, 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 no. Then I said, no, Saliba. That's what I was saying. Overrated center back. Yeah, I agree. He's a great center Gabriel, back. Gabriel, overrated as fuck. Gabriel's overrated as fuck. Ben White, trash. Saliba's the best one out of the out of the, their defense. But even him, that's what pissed me off is because how much, how highly they rate him. He's a great center back. He's good. He's actually one of the, the, the best. But he's not even the best in the league. Never mind the best in the world. Like Van Dyke is still very clear of him, oh, and I'm yeah, not crazy yeah. about and Van Dyke. I, and I was gonna say, I, but I know I'll thought. rate Van Dyke. I know what he can do. I've I've seen him at his best. I'll I'll give Van Dyke his flowers. He mm-hmm. deserves it at times. Mm-hmm. Saliba is nowhere fucking close. And the fact that they try to rate this guy, mm-hmm. it's it's a joke. And that's what Arsenal's problem is too. They rate these guys way too high. And they start actually doing good. And then when it crashes, they start blaming them. And they're like, oh, how did we fail? But Because the guys aren't that good. Yeah. Saka is not a good player. Yeah. He's, he's very, he's he's very fast. And he's not overrated. Him. He had a couple of good games. And you guys overrated the fuck out of him. Mm. Well, that's, like, that's, like I, I feel like when you, when you talk about Arsenal, the only player on that team, and he doesn't even get the plaudits he deserves it because it's everybody else getting them. I think the only class player on that team is Martin Odegaard. I was just about, that's all. I think literally you, you stole that out of my out And of I remember mouth. I made that claim. He's the Norwegian Iniesta. Yeah. Obviously, that's absurd on my behalf. No one compares to Iniesta, but. No, no, no. But he has I, that I, aura. I, you know, he. That I'll agree 100% with if you. If you looked at me and said he's Arsenal, yes, I agree. But to fucking gas up guys like, and, and I'll even say Jorginho, man. You want to gas up Jorginho? No. He's not the best either. And I know he's Italian. So, the, like, there's my Italian mm. bias out the window. I think Jorginho <laughs> at times is almost overrated. Yeah, yeah. But I think he knows how to do the simple things very well. And and the position. What I would say for Jorginho as, as that, what, like, that number six, right now, who's really better than him? Yeah. Well, oh, wait, are you saying in the world? Or- I know, in the world. Like he he's still up there. Like you're not like wrong. Again, you're not gets, wrong, Joe. He, like and, and that's what I hate. May makes me sick because they will overrate him. But he is great. He's great for that. But they they make him seem like he's all the way up here. But it's like, hey, no, brother. Like he's right over here. Relax. Yeah, he's right now. He's probably one of the best in the world because there's not many there, that well, can that's do like, it. There's not in that position through, through no. six anymore. There's not a through everybody. And through that, like everybody's a lot yeah, younger. Everyone's kind stuff. of everyone's kind of starting out. A, a lot, players now playing that six role. So. Yeah, okay, I'll give him that. But the way that they rate him sometimes, it make it actually makes Declan me sick. Rice, and he's Italian. Declan Rice makes one tackle, and he's being worth every penny. The eighty million better exactly. than Pulo ever like, was. Stuff like that. And I think again, it's it's them picking at straws. He's like Pulo and Gattuso, but better than them. Yeah, oh, okay, buddy. Okay, dude, yeah. He can't hold a candle. Take, to these guys. take it easy. The only thing that he has on them is his price tag, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> nah, that's about. And it. even then, Pulo never went for a crazy absurd fee. He went for free. So he he can brag that hey, uh, I I was one sold for eighty mil. Yeah. Pirlo and Gattuso can't. So that's the only thing he has on them. Yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He'll never be better than any of them. But um, yeah, maybe Gattuso. Ah, I saw a video actually today about Gattuso that he's tore his ACL during a game and he still played the rest of the game. But that was Gattuso. That's kind of crazy, that's man. Gattuso, man. Seeing he stuff just... like okay, obviously I always I always had a very yeah. nice appreciation. <laughs> Reno, come off. You're hurt. No, no, fuck no. you. I stay. I'm good. I've always appreciated <laughs> Gattuso. And it's like, yeah, even yeah. like even like Roy Keane. Okay. Now, hear me out. I know they both suck. Yeah. They were both butchers. Zero ball ability. Can't no skill pass, no at shoot, all. Whatever. But those guys are the first names on the team sheet for me yeah. because those are the guys that they play for the badge. They will fucking keep going for 120 minutes nonstop, running, running, fucking doing everything in their physical power mm. and they'll break you down. Yeah. That's true. You know, so. I will always tell you I love those guys the most. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how we're getting on this topic of Gattuso and Roy Keane. It's okay. I, like, I kind of like it, reminiscing about Gattuso. Let's finish things off here 
with Finish off going to our team now. Our team. <laughs> I love these games. We we prepare like a whole like things of like what we love could talk about and stuff teams. like that. Al looked at me today and I'm like, no, like, no let's no, build Joe. a team. Like, let's have some. Let's have some let's fun. Have some fun. Let's let's let's, you know, let's got, do a little challenge for us. Got ourselves. the Euro Cup coming up, Joe. We've got a lot to look forward to. A lot of different teams. Why not build a team based on all these different teams? Yeah, yeah. What better fun than two two friends building teams? <laughs> so starting eleven. European players, present day. Here's the challenging part. We could only use one nation. Uh, sorry, a nationality once. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I like that. I like it. So, so we, we don't too, we don't have too much Italy bias. No bias and put <laughs> like Donnarumma, <laughs> Cambiasso, Mangini, Pellegrini. Like gotta, no, no, we gotta one think, guy. We gotta think. This be tough. Yeah. So it's gonna be funny who which one of us chooses the Italian. <laughs> we'll see, but. Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you want to start it off, or do you want me to start it off? Um, I'll start off. All I'll right. start off in net. In net, I'm gonna start off strong. Let me see. What am I? At? Sorry, I just gotta look at. Uh, I, get, I, th- I have somebody in my mind. I just want to look at some of the options here. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty confident in it. I'm gonna go with Chesney in net. Really? Yeah. You know what's crazy, actually. I would have said in this moment, I would have actually said uh, Donnarumma. No. One of the best goalies in the world. I know, but like, I, I, we, throw him in I feel like we can save an Italian for somewhere else on the field. I think there's better players in each other position. No. So that's why I was going to say Donnarumma. So no. you're, you're, Most you, positions, yeah. You chuffed it. You chuffed no, 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 no. Uh, Chesney, Chesney. Okay. Right back. <clears throat> so you said Chesney, so that's Poland. I'm going to choose a top nine nation over here. I'm going to go with Portugal. Joao Cancelo on right back. Motherfucker. I had my center back lined up and it was Portuguese. <laughs> Fucking God damn Joao it. Cancelo. Cause... Fucking Portuguese, man. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Now you kind of messed me up. Um, Actually, no. I think I got someone. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I think I'm good. I'm going to go First center back, we're lying. Wait, four in the back, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Four, right three, three. yeah, yeah. It's four, three, three. It's always assumed. Okay, okay, okay. Just want, just, I just want to make sure. First center back, I'm gonna be going with. Might be a little bit controversial. You might not like it. I'm gonna go with Van Dyke. I knew it. You could have said Nathan Ake. You could have said the like, like any other Dutch legend, center back. But anyways, Van Dyke's the best Dutch center back. Ruined so. my life because I would have chosen e- oh, even though Ian Matson's not going. Anyways. Other center back, um, I'm going to go with Jasko Guardiol, Croatia. Guardiol, okay. Okay. Okay, now, hmm, now I got to do a left back. I have a couple in mind, but I think, I think I'm just going to, I mean, right now, probably the le- best left back in the world. I'm going to go with Cambiasso left back. <laughs> oh, I forgot when I said something funny here. I thought we were just building a team. I was really hoping you didn't say Italy there. Because <laughs> once you didn't say Donnarumma, I was lining it up to say Cristante in the midfield. <laughs> no, thank God. I was lining thank it God up. God, it's a Cambiasso. My baby. Fucking prick. <laughs> oh. When I can't say Cristante. So, uh, Sulevu. <laughs> I hate you with everything in me, but whatever. Uh, okay. Three mids now. Three mids. You, like, I don't think this really matters, but like we're just doing like a, like a flat three. You're going to do like a defensive mid, attacking nah, mid. We could do, we, we'll say it's a flat three, but you could you put a kinda, defensive, attacking, kinda, okay, okay, whatever. Okay. As long as they're a central player. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I didn't want to. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with one of our center mids. I'm going to say Rodri, Spain. I feel like, um, honestly, we're thinking of the same people because like, I literally had Rodri lined up. I was like, okay, whoever Joe says, I'm going to go Spain and I'm going to go Rodri. Now, okay, I thought you were going to go with him. I'm going to go with him as my as the second midfielder. I'm going to go with Bellingol. Overrated. <laughs> Trash. Yeah, but hey, I'll take him my midfield. I'm going to go with... <laughs> now what, buddy? Germany. Goretzka. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to go, go Tony Cruz there. I w- no, because I'm pretty sure he's retired. So I oh, can't he's playing the tournament. Is he? Yeah, last tournament. 
I'm not going to change him. You stick with Goretzka or Kimmich, you could have said? I was going to say Kimmich. I was. But he's just a poor man's Philip Lom. Honestly, he's never going to live up to whatever he was supposed to be. Bold, bold take. That's kind of crazy, Kimmich, man. I think you, he'll be better pissed, than Lom by the end of it. You pissed me off way too much. I think he'll be better than Lom by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have his autograph card, so I'm hoping that he'll be better than Lom by the end of it. <laughs> really hoping. Okay, okay. At least you're honest. Really though. hoping. All right. Uh, <coughs> okay. So let's kind of look. Let's look over here at the attack. Um, I have a couple options, but I'm, I'm trying to like I'm trying to remember now and kind of go through who we already said, so I don't uh, be stupid. Who do we see from France? We, no see anybody. we didn't say anybody. Okay, so France still open. Um, Portugal's Belgium's taken. Still open. Turkey's out. Oh, Turkey's still there. Um, that's interesting. Okay, okay. Um. I'm going to go keep it open. I'm going to go left wing Mbappe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I had a feeling you would go with a, a Frenchman. Yeah. So I was already kind of prepped mentally. I already this. know who the, the, for the last two, whatever you can do, whatever position. Cause I already got both of them. But see, head. I got to fact check myself right now because what? I'm about to say somebody's name, but I don't know if he is actually this nationality. I'm almost positive. He is. Are you going to show me? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to go with striker. That's okay. Okay. Gonna, hey, you, hey, you do whatever you right want. Into it. Whatever you want. Because baby. The, the right wing position, it's easier. There's a lot more wingers. Not really. There. Not, without, not huh? with the countries we have left, but thankfully. No. I already have another name for you. Don't worry. I'll, I'll say the last one if, just in case if you don't, you, uh, don't remember anything. Is George you, Best? Yeah. <laughs> um, no. I'm going to say striker. Benjamin Sesko. Slovenia. Probably could have sent Dusan Vlavic, but whatever. Why would I no say big, that bum? No big deal. Okay, you know what? Right wing? No, no. I don't want... I don't want I, Joe's trying to help me now and give me these, these Napoli scum. No, 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 no. You know who's going to be playing right wing in our team? You better A not A young say. man from Turkey, Keenan Yildiz, playing right wing for us, baby. You want to give me that bullshit Arsenal fucking scum up top? Who? Yeah. Isn't that guy that you, that you said, isn't he from Arsenal? No. Where's he from? Benjamin Sesko's on Leipzig, man. Was on Leipzig. I don't know what you thought about. Wait, Why no. Ars- yeah, he is. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he not played. on Arsenal. He was linked with Arsenal this year. Oh, okay, maybe that's what, maybe that's what I saw. also linked with Milan and like 18 other different yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. Milan always want to throw their, their hat in yeah. the ring. Yeah, yeah, we're linked with him too. I think we're going to get him. They spend $5, him. $5 every transfer window. And, they sell and it's just a pack guys. of cigarettes <laughs> or severance. Yeah, yeah, hey, but we were linked. I would have, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I would have actually went with Cavada Dona. No. But I know you, have a, you have a soft spot for a fucking hair flip merchant in yep. Ken and Yildiz. Dude, he cut his hair because of that. Yeah, fuck. He was having too much, too much hair problems, so he had to cut it off. What about you? Me and you don't have that problem. What about yeah? I was gonna say we definitely don't have that problem. <laughs> what about Mudrick? Ukraine Fuck Bolt. Mudrick, dude, Ukraine Bolt, that guy. Dude, I feel so bad for Chelsea because I think that was the one battle that Arsenal actually won. Dude, we could have. You know how many? When you when you go through the list of like whoever's in it, like I'm going through now, it's always whenever we're making these teams, I can't think of a name, and I I almost panic. It's like, uh, oh, that, who are you gonna go you with? Know? Who are you gonna change? <clears throat> no, but I'm just <clears throat> saying, like Scotland, we could have said that guy in Bologna, Evan Ferguson. Yeah, or he's like Robertson player. left back. Andy Robertson, like, see, didn't even come to my head. Slow Serbia, fucking Dusan Tadic, Kravic, Milinkovic Savic. I would never say Kostic, even though he's yeah. linked with Roman no, now. No, we don't, we don't want him. <laughs> 15 million is linked with you guys, baby. No, I'd, give him, I'd give him a pack of cigarettes. Belgium, we could have said Kevin De Bruyne. Do we say anybody from Belgium? No. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, you didn't even think about it in the moment. We're, we just were so fixated on certain things that it's like, you don't even realize it. At any moment, we could have turned around and said Belgium. I was, was, was going to say maybe we do a part two next week with our guests, but I feel like our, our, it's going to end up turning into a full Italy team. So. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> our guests next week. Our, hey, give you a hint. They're Italian. Yeah. And they're, they're very Italian. They're so. not very intelligent. <laughs> they have a uh, brain capacity of like 63 things. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that one. Yeah, we'll see how that actually all pans out. But with, with, um, those fellers. I think that's I think that's it for today's episode. Our team's done. Yeah, team's, team's done. done. I don't want to talk to you guys anymore because I know I'm gonna get comments. I have zero ball knowledge because <laughs> I said Benjamin Sesco instead of somebody. Or I, or I mispronounced it, just yeah, like I mispronounced Ballon Dior. Blavich, so. 
It's okay. It is belong Dior, technically Dior. sponsored by Dior. Yeah, it is. I, see, I get it. I get it. They yeah. don't. You know what it is? They don't get it. You guys just don't understand. They're not. They're, right? not, they're not in the culture. That's, that's what it is. That's the thing. You're not you diversified. Catch up or stay back. Either one or mustard. What? Didn't she say catch up? Catch up. Oh, catch up. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, <laughs> I think we're gonna end things off there. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go check out our latest videos that are all up on there. We also got a new TikTok posted with my dad today. So go (laughs) check that out. Big Tones made an appearance. And uh, before I sign off, Joe, I'm going to tell you a little joke. Okay? Okay. Okay, you ready? (laughs) Why did Mason Greenwood win? The Getafe Player of the Season Award. Because he's good at beating balls? No. I don't know. <laughs> he was good? Because it's called the Getafe Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> off. Why did you go full leprechaun when you said that? Second off. What do you mean? I was trying to sound like Bob Marley. <laughs> you didn't sound like him. That was my Jamaican accent. Were, were you getting Irish hints in there? You sound like an Irish <laughs> R&B singer, man. God damn it. I really, got, I really got to work on my accents. I thought I was getting there. I was really trying to introduce you guys into my accents and... Uh, my whole my whole new spiel, but I yeah. guess I'd go back to the drawing board on that I, one. I think Al should just just go to work. Yeah, to maybe work. maybe uh maybe just stick with uh my own accent that uh the get off I, I, <laughs> You like that? I, do. Joe's, I do, Joe's, like, Joe's gonna, gonna randomly be saying the, uh, get I'm gonna off, I'm gonna man. say it in our group <laughs> chat now, or I'm gonna like I'm gonna be at home on the couch and just say say the get, get off, off me. <laughs> That's her laughing. Well, guys, yeah, you got a free joke out of it. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and episode. We will hear you next week. We will see you next week. We promise. It won't be in two weeks. Ciao, ciao. See you later.